No, I don't have perfect pitch, not even close. But what is perfect pitch? And do musicians really need it? Or is it just a parlor trick? And what do the Nazis have to do with pitch at all? Let's find out more about perfect pitch. Hi everybody, CJ here and welcome. Today we're taking a look at perfect pitch. What is perfect pitch? Well, first of all, about one in 10,000 people possess the ability of perfect pitch. And that is to be able to name any note without a reference note. In other words, if we ask somebody with perfect pitch to sing you a C or an A or a B flat, they'll be able to sing it perfectly without any reference. And if you ask them to name the notes of a chord, they'll be able to do so without looking. If I play this, a person with perfect pitch can tell me every single note that's there. That is absolutely amazing, absolutely fabulous. When I was coming up in music lessons, I wanted perfect pitch so bad. I thought it would be the greatest thing to have. It'll make me the greatest musician in the world. Or so I believed. Don't know if that's really true. And furthermore, I'll probably never know because perfect pitch is something you either have or you don't. It's either impossible or very difficult to develop later in life. Um, so what do musicians do? What do we musicians do who don't have perfect pitch? How do we actually find the notes that we want when we want them? We use relative pitch and pattern recognition. Relative pitch is the ability to name a note after given a reference note. So if I'm given the note C, then I can closely approximate any other note. For example, F. That's approximately an F. Yeah, not perfectly one because I don't have perfect. Pitch. But relative pitch is a skill that can be developed as well as pattern recognition. Music is made of patterns, you learn to recognize those patterns along with relative pitch and you're on your way. Those are skills that can be developed, unlike perfect pitch. So please do not use your time, don't waste your time trying to get perfect pitch. Work on relative pitch. People with perfect pitch can also be tricked. A 2013 University of Chicago study showed that 27 participants could not notice when a song was slightly detuned. In this study, they took 27 participants with perfect pitch and played them a classical piece, a very long piece, and slowly detuned it as they were playing it. So they lowered the pitch. Not a single participant noticed. But afterward, their tonal center had changed. Whereas prior to listening to the piece of music, they would have correctly identified this note as C. But afterward, the same note, they would have thought was sharp. All of them called it sharp. Their tonal center had been changed. So, from a human perspective, there's not much perfect. Not actually perfect. But let's take a look at pitch itself. Absolute pitch. Can a pitch be absolute? But first of all, what is a pitch? A pitch is a frequency measured in hertz or cycles per second. We can hear, humans can hear about from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. But most of the sounds we hear on a daily basis are between 250 and 6,000 hertz. In music, in piano, keyboard, this lowest note, A, is 27.5 hertz. The highest note, the C, is 4,186.01 hertz. And our favorite note, middle C, 261.626 hertz. And then there's the note 
that everyone tunes to. A. The A above middle C is set at 440 hertz. How did this come about? Because it wasn't always this way. Before, in the past, before the 20th century, there were orchestras that played from 415, 415 hertz, like Baroque music, right up to like 460 hertz. So there was no consistency on tuning frequencies for an orchestra or choir or whatever the case may be. So people were all over the place. So there was a need for some consistency. So in 1939, there was a meeting in London, in Broadcast House, home of the BBC. And at this meeting by the International Standards Organization, they were to set the official tuning frequency at 440 hertz. All right, now this is where the Nazis come in because apparently Hitler's propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, was in charge, he was in charge of the radios, all the radio stations in Germany, right? He called this meeting in order to change the frequency to 440. And the reason is because raising it to 440 causes human bodies to tense up and get stressed and opens people up to mind control. That's great, Hit that's great uh, Hitler stuff, Nazi stuff. Mind controls right up their alley. But is that really true? Not necessarily. It's not it's not really true. That conspiracy started in 1988 by Lyndon LaRouche and the, the Schiller Institute. That's because they like a different frequency. Now, that meeting in 1939 actually did take place, but the frequency wasn't set there because World War II broke out shortly after, so no one had time to officially set anything. But in 1970, in 1917, the American Federation of Musicians had agreed to use 440 as their standard tuning. So by default, 440 became the norm. And in 1975, the International Standards Organization officially recognized 440 hertz as the official tuning frequency. But it hasn't always been that way. Um, like I said, there have been many variations, even from town to town, city to city. But the most popular one is the frequency 432, also referred to as Verdi's A, named after Giuseppe Verdi was a 19th century composer and it was also called the scientific A because using the Schumann resonance yes nice and fancy sounding but all that is is that the earth has a frequency of eight cycles per second eight hertz and when you multiply that you double that octave after octave you end up with middle C at 256 and A at 432. Now, because these measurements are made off of the Earth, they're thought to be more natural. These frequencies will keep humanity in tune with nature. So that's why people want to use 432 as the official tuning standard and not 440. Now, what's this have to do with perfect pitch? All it means is that the notes that we use and the frequencies that we use are not absolute. There is nothing intrinsically perfect or absolute about A440. It could easily be A432 or A415 or some other frequency. We chose that frequency. It's an arbitrary choice. And, you know, it wasn't handed down to us by some musical deity or anything like that. So what's perfect or absolute about it? Really? Nothing. So... What's the big deal with perfect pitch? I have no idea. Just know this. You do not need to waste your time trying to develop perfect pitch. It's just not worth your time or energy. However, relative pitch, that's where you can spend your time. Being able to identify the distances between notes. That way, when you're listening to music, you can analyze it better along with pattern recognition. Those are the skills that you really want to focus on. So, I don't know how, uh, how our friends out there with perfect pitch would feel about this video. I don't know if you like it. If you've got perfect pitch, let me know how you feel about it 
in the comments. Is perfect pitch a blessing or a curse? Let me know. And if you've ever met somebody or worked with someone with perfect pitch, let me know what that experience was about. You can let me know in the comments as well. Now, if you like this video, just click on the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe. Greatly appreciate it. And I think uh, that's about it today for Perfect Pitch. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.